Okay, so here's the next deck of uh, revision cards for C2.3, Atomic Structure. Okay, there's just a reminder of my YouTube channel. It's called One Page Science. Make sure you search that as one word when you search on YouTube. This is GCSE, Chemistry, uh, AQA Exam Board, and this is the last topic in C2A. So if you're doing additional uh, science, this will be on your paper one. Okay, let's go. So, what are the relative masses of protons, neutrons, and electrons? Okay. Protons have relative mass of one. Neutrons, relative mass of one. Electrons, essentially, it's zero. Okay, very small. Uh, if you want to be really precise about it, it's one, one thousand eight hundred thirty-six. Okay. Next then, in, if you see uh, an atom in the periodic table, okay, an element in the periodic table, there's two numbers. The top number and the bottom number, what are these called? Okay. Bottom number is the atomic number, top number is the mass number. Okay. If in doubt, in the exam, there's a little key on your periodic table that tells you that. Okay. But it's worth remembering. Okay. So, what do those numbers tell you? So, what does the atomic number tell you about an atom? Okay. So, what it actually tells you is the total number of protons. Okay. But because all atoms are neutral, it also tells you how many electrons you've got. So every proton that's positive is an electron that's negative. Okay, next one. What does the mass number then tell you about an atom? Okay, a mass number tells you the total number of protons and neutrons added together. Okay. So let's take an example. So if you had, you might be asked to work out how many protons, neutrons, and electrons there are in a particular atom. So let's pick bromine as an example. Okay, so you look in the periodic table, that's what you'd find when you look at bromine. Okay, so number of protons, 35. Number of protons equals the number of electrons, so electrons is also 35. The number of neutrons is the mass number minus the atomic number, so 80 minus 35. Do that in your calculator, the answer is 45. Okay, next one. What is an isotope? Okay, so an isotope is in our atoms with the same number of protons but a different number of neutrons. Next one. Define the term relative atomic mass, shorthand AR. Okay. And then this is the average mass of all of the isotopes of a particular element and that's then compared to the mass of an atom of carbon-12, sometimes written as C12. Okay, next one, define the term relative formula mass. Okay, sometimes this will be called relative molecular mass. And it's given a shorthand MR. Okay, and this is the sum of all the atomic masses of the atoms uh, given the formula of a compound. Okay, I've made a video tutorial on this um, called relative molecular mass that shows you how to work through those. Uh, so I won't do that here. Next one, what are the advantages of using instrumental methods to detect compounds. Okay, so if you use an instrument rather than uh, something in the lab, okay, they're more accurate, they're more sensitive, it's faster, okay, you only need very small amounts of material, okay, and you also it can be automated, so you don't need quite so much human interaction, you can leave these things running overnight, you go home, come back to in the morning, every, all the answers are there for you. Okay, what are some of the uses of paper chromatography? Uh, they can be used for identifying additives in food uh, and they can also be used for testing for drugs by police or airports. Um, they can also be used for testing for drugs uh, uh, in athletes. Okay, next one then. Describe the process of gas chromatography. Now this is actually a really complicated process. So for GCSE, just a simplified version of what it is. Okay? So the first thing you do is that you inject a sample uh, of your material into the machine. Okay? And then inert gases carry the molecule through a column that's packed with a solid. Okay? And essentially those molecules then interact with the gases and the solid. Okay? And depending which they interact with more, if they interact with the solid loads, they'll take longer to go through the column. If they interact with the gas more, then they'll go through the column faster. Okay? So because of this, different molecules will travel through the column at different speeds. Okay? What information do you get from gas chromatography? Okay, so the number of different peaks you get, that tells you how many different compounds you've got. 
Okay? And the height of the peaks, that tells you how much you've got of each compound. Okay? The time taken for a compound to be detected in gas chromatography is called the retention time. Next one, what information do you get from mass spectrometry? Okay, so you get something called a molecular iron peak, and this will always be the peak that's the furthest to the right-hand side on a, on a mass, spectrum, mass spectrum. Okay, um, And this tells you what the relative molecular mass is of your compound. Okay, So uh, you can use gas chromatography and mass spectrometry together, and you can tell how many different compounds you've got and a bit of information about them as well. Okay, percentage composition uh, of an element in a compound. Okay, I wrote C video because again, I've made a video of this. This is a bit more complicated to try and fit onto one of these cards. Just see one of my uh, videos from that. Okay, uh, define the term empirical formula. Okay, so the empirical formula is the simplest whole number ratio of the atoms of each element within a compound. Okay, different to the um, molecular formula, that's the actual number. Empirical formula calculations, which you do have to be able to do. Again, uh, see my video, okay? Go on to uh, my one page science uh, and go to the YouTube channel. In, in, in one of the next ones, I'll give, you, I'll give you a bit more detail about where to go. Okay, calculating masses in reactions. Again, it's a bit too much to try and fit on one of these cards. Okay, um, it's part of this playlist actually, so if you carry on with the C2A playlist, you'll find a video uh, that shows you how to work through those calculations. Okay, next one. Is why might you not get 100% yield for a chemical reaction? Okay, so there's three key things for you to remember here. It could be that the reaction hasn't gone to completion, okay, which is particularly if it's a reversible reaction, some of the products might have turned back into reactants again. Okay, um, it could be that um, you've lost some of your material uh, in trying to purify it, okay, so in the separation stages or in the purification step you lose a little bit of it, okay? And it could be that there's more stuff going on, more chemistry going on than your actual, um, your uh, reaction shows. So you could have side reactions happening and that could be the reactants forming different products or it could be that when the products form, they carry on reacting and turn into something else. Okay. Next one. Uh, what's the equation for trying to work out percentage yield? So the equation is you take the actual amount that you, that you get from your reaction, you divide it by the theoretical maximum amount that you could have got, and you multiply it by 100. Okay. I haven't made a video for this yet, but there probably will be one coming uh, shortly. Just talk you through those. Okay. What does this symbol mean? So a half arrow pointing this way and a half arrow pointing that way. Okay, that means that a reaction is reversible. Okay, that's it. C2.3 atomic structure is done. Okay, so the three that I put, so C2.1, 2.2, and 2.3, that's everything that you need for uh, additional science paper one. Okay, so just to remind you, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and share.